Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I am your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. Uh, Go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Snag your free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. It's a great review if you're a practicing clinician or if you're a student going through pharmacology classes, board exams, uh, anything like that. It's it's really nice resource uh, where I highlight some of the most important testable things as well as some of the most important clinical pearls and things that you're going to actually see in real life. So again, 31-page PDF, free to download, um, no cost to you, just simply an email, and you'll get updates when we've got new content, new podcasts available, and things like that too. So uh, go do that at reallifepharmacology.com. All right, so let's get into the drug of the day today, and that is bumetanide. The brand name of this medication is Bumex. Uh, I can't say I see it a ton in clinical practice, but I definitely do see it from time to time. This medication is a loop diuretic. Uh, Primary use you're going to see it used for is edema. Uh, There's maybe a couple of rare cases where I've seen it for hypertension or something like that. But um, by and large, you see a patient on a loop diuretic, um, you can guess most of the time that it's going to be used for edema and running off fluid. So how does it do that? Uh, Being a loop diuretic, it's going to block sodium and chloride reabsorption in the ascending loop of Henle in the kidney. Okay, and ultimately by by blocking that reabsorption, it's going to go out through the urine, and with that loss of water, um, electrolytes are going to go with it. So sodium, potassium, magnesium, all that good stuff. So uh, that's how the the drug works. That's how we run fluid off in a patient with CHF, for example, uh, and how the the medication is going to work there. One important thing that usually patients will uh, find out the hard way if they weren't adequately educated uh, is thinking about the timing of that dose. Um, Knowing that it's a loop diuretic, it's going to run off fluid and the patient's going to be peeing a lot more. Um, Be sure we don't get that dose too close to bedtime so the patient's up all night. Now, usually it only takes once or twice uh, for a patient to realize this, again, if they weren't properly educated, um, because they don't want to be up all night either going to the the bathroom. So uh, that's one of the the primary adverse effects that patients really um, care most about from a subjective uh, situation. And it's always good to ask, too, if they're skipping doses of their diuretics, particularly Uh, If they're having trouble with edema, um, that's a good question to ask. How many times are you you skipping it? Because folks in social situations won't want to have to go to the bathroom all the time. And so sometimes, um, depending upon how active they are and what they do out in the community and things like that, um, they will sometimes skip these doses maybe multiple days per week. Uh, And so that can ultimately lead to a worsening uh, of edema and potentially heart failure if you're using it uh, for that situation, for example. So really, really important to remember that and the the social um, constraints and issues associated with uh, using a loop diuretic like bumetanide. Uh, Other adverse effects, uh, muscle cramps. Uh, If I have a patient report that, I'm definitely going to want to um, get electrolytes as well or at least make sure they've been done somewhat recently Um, because as we reduce electrolytes, as we get into a hypokalemic state, for example, uh, the risk of muscle cramps and that adverse effect certainly goes up significantly. Uh, Running off fluid, we're going to drop blood pressure, so lower blood pressure could be a good thing, but it could be a bad thing too if we drop it too far. So pay attention to dizziness and uh, significant drops in in blood pressure that are just too low. Um, Headache you might see, uh, those electrolyte reductions I certainly mentioned before, potassium, magnesium, uh, sodium. One other thing to think about with the water loss Uh, is the risk for dehydration. So acute renal failure is a possibility if we get too aggressive with pumping fluid out of the body. 
um, we can do it to an extent uh, that it definitely damages the kidney. Uh, other maybe more uh, rare things, uh, increase in, in uric acid. Well, maybe it isn't crazy rare, um, but it's sometimes something we just have to deal with um, because a lot of the diuretics potentially do this. Um, so you might have to watch that a little bit more closely with gout patients. Um, maybe we've got to do some dose adjustments with allopurinol or whatever they're taking. Um, but it is important, I think, to at least pay attention to that and recognize that it might raise uric acid levels. Uh, ototoxicity. So that is a pretty rare adverse effect. In, in all honesty, I haven't seen it in practice uh, very often at all. Um, but there are some other drugs and stuff, which I'll talk about in drug interactions, that, that could increase that risk. So again, not, not crazy common, but as you escalate doses, it is a dose-dependent effect. So higher the dose, more likely you could potentially see this rare uh, adverse effect. All right, so let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like BCPS, ambulatory care, geriatrics, BCMTMS, or the NAPLEX exam, go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. We've got a growing list of resources. Uh, we've accumulated and added content over the years, a great complete package uh, really to help you prepare to pass your exam. So uh, go support the sponsor, meded101.com slash store, which directly goes to help this podcast. In addition, if you're another healthcare professional, a nurse, med student, PA, nurse practitioner, we've got all sorts of books on Amazon, on Audible, on case studies, drug interactions, clinical pearls, polypharmacy, all that good stuff. Um, things that really truly happen in clinical practice and that are going to be important to you as a practicing healthcare practitioner. So again, your support there with purchases at meded101.com slash store directly helps this podcast. All right, so one quick note before I get into drug interactions, I wanted to mention conversions. This happens occasionally. Conversions between loop diuretics. So the classic loop diuretic is Lasix, brand name Lasix, uh, generic name furosemide, and a 40 milligram dose is approximately equivalent to one milligram of bumetanide. Okay, so bumetanide is obviously a lot more potent because it takes less of the drug uh, to do similar effects. So just wanted to throw that conversion out there. I have seen that uh, come up in, in pharmacology classes throughout pharmacy school and things like that. So good conversion just to kind of uh, have in your head or at least kind of uh, have heard it before. All right, so let's finish up with those drug interactions. So first off, I think about diuresis and drugs that are going to add to that effect. So any other diuretics, thiazide diuretics, potassium sparing diuretics, uh, maybe even a drug uh, class of drugs like the SGLT2 inhibitors can have a diuresis type effect. Um, that's going to potentially add to that. So that could drop blood pressure further. That's an additive effect, certainly. And it could also increase the risk for dehydration and renal impairment. So really, really important to, I think, pay attention to that. Sticking on the topic of renal impairment, uh, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, NSAIDs, when you start combining these with a loop diuretic like brumetanide, uh, we're going to increase the risk of renal impairment. So really, really important to monitor that kidney function for sure. Uh, lithium concentrations can go up with a drug like bumetanide. Important to monitor that in our bipolar patients. Uh, blood pressure effect, I, I certainly mentioned already a little bit. Um, any blood pressure med we add is going to lower blood pressure further. Uh, we're probably intentionally trying to do that, but we can certainly lower it too far. So think of your beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and, and so on and so forth there. Uh, in addition, we've got plenty of other drugs that lower blood pressure. So Cinemet's kind of my always my classic example of a drug that can cause hypotension. So uh, pay attention to that, and we certainly could have some additive effects. 
we're simply going to monitor um, is what we're going to do. Check blood pressures and obviously look for dizziness and signs of hypotension. Uh, ototoxicity. So there's one classic uh, group of drugs that can cause ototoxicity, so ear toxicity, uh, and that is the aminoglycosides. So gentamicin, tobramycin, things like that. So um, that can definitely have an additive risk as far as ototoxicity goes. And also keep in mind aminoglycosides are nephrotoxic as well. So we could have some additive risks there as well. Uh, lowering magnesium levels, bumetanide certainly does that. We could have some additive effects with a drug like uh, omeprazole, for example. So the PPIs can potentially lower magnesium levels, and if bumetanide is added on top of that, could lower that further and put a, a, patient's, a patient into a low magnesium type of state. And then I wanted to mention the opposition of the benefit from bumetanide. So what, what the heck am I talking about there? So think about drugs that can worsen heart failure, worsen edema type situation. So NSAIDs are going to be the most common one you should think about there. Uh, another fairly common group of meds are the gabapentinoids. So your gabapentin, your pregabalin, okay? Uh, diabetes, pioglitazone, uh, that's, those are all good examples of drugs that are going to oppose or potentially cause the prescribing cascade where you start an NSAID and two weeks later, now you need bumetanide to get rid of edema. So keep those uh, polypharmacy prescribing cascade examples in mind. They happen all the time in clinical practice. And uh, go check out my, my book, uh, Perils of Polypharmacy. I go through tons of those examples. Um, great examples there that can really help you uh, start to get, uh, train your brain to think a little bit differently when you see new symptoms and that type of thing. So um, with that, I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, found it helpful, uh, leave a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. I'm greatly appreciative of that. Uh, certainly support the sponsor, meded101.com slash store. If you find something uh, useful uh, there that goes, your purchases there go directly uh, to help support this podcast. If you want to reach out to me, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, otherwise mededucation101 at gmail.com. All right, well, I'm going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, one last thing, go subscribe at reallifepharmacology.com and get your free uh, little study guide PDF of the top 200 drugs. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you have a great rest of your day.